So if you're in the market for a new computer or just been to the PC store lately, chances are you've heard the argument that this notebook i7 is much better than this desktop i5. And well, whenever you try and get an answer out of that person, their general response is, well, it's an i7, that means it's clearly better if we look at Intel's marketing scheme. And whilst they would be right, they're not exactly doing all their comparisons. And it does raise the question, is that notebook i7 better than the desktop i5? Hey guys, Steve Moddy here, back with another video, and today we are here with that exact test. Testing the desktop i5 versus a notebook i7. Now for our testing today, we'll start off with the desktop counterpart, the i5-6600K. This is the new Skylake, which you can check out a video right here, or it should be there if we've released it, depending on how we release videos. Now we also went ahead and paired it up with what I thought was an equal GPU, the GTX 770 GPU, and 16 gigs of our standard 2400 system. System RAM. We also to pair it up with the Thermaltake Water 3.0, that's the uh, triple 120 mil rad version, and well, paired it up with some SSDs and other good things like that. So for our notebook side, we grabbed the ASUS G501, which features an i7-4710HQ notebook processor, which is quad core with hype threading, so theoretically eight core, but hey, threaded, but anyway, we'll move on from that. It also too features 16 gigs of RAM and extremely fast SSD, which is just mind-blowingly fast, as well as a GeForce GTX 970. 70M. So, I thought originally that those GPUs would line up, but later on in the video, we'll find out, uh, might not have been the best results. Now, if you want to go ahead and check our review of the G501, you just have to wait on a little bit longer until we do our full review on that. But with that being said, let's get into some gaming testing. And well, I thought this would actually be a fair test. Once I started firing up some games and running them, I got halfway through my game testing list until I realised the GPU was doing a lot more of the work than the CPU was actually doing. After about the first three or four games I ran, I found that the CPUs weren't exactly doing much of a difference and it was coming down to GPU power. The desktop did definitely beat it out in every single test that we did, so I kind of found it was a little bit unfair. Do keep in mind though, if you know the specs of the G501, it does have a 4K panel. We were running our games in 1080. So if you're worried about that, don't worry, we were all in 1080p. So it does look like the CPU wasn't exactly, well, doing exactly that much. So I decided to do some more real world tests after that to see whether the i5 was better than the i7 and vice versa and do a little bit more things that might be bound to the CPU. We went ahead and did some Premiere Pro After Effects and Maya 2016 tests and found just about the same results within a few seconds to minutes of actually testing, which isn't actually half that bad. So with those tests done, I kind of concluded, well, it is actually very, very difficult and we'll have to go ahead and jump into some more theories as well as on paper testing and what Intel actually says out of this. Now, I did note that this is essentially a laptop versus desktop solution rather than an i5 CPU versus an i7 CPU. So it was a lot harder to actually test for than, well, just throwing them on a test bench and actually going for it. The i7, for example, has a lot more constraints on it than the actual i5. Not only is it a quad-core CPU with hype threading to make it theoretically Eight, they also too need to keep all that processing power underneath heat and thermal limits, which is actually quite a big problem when it comes to getting the most out of your chips. Also too, heat was a major problem. Being a hot room, this is, and also too, having warmer conditions with heaters and stuff like that on in the winter time, I found it started to thermal throttle that poor i7, which the i5 didn't have that problem. So instead of running at full speed, the i7 was actually throttling back as the cooling solution in the G501 isn't exactly the best for warmer climates. In terms of the actual cooling dissipation space, it had roughly about 30 centimeters of total cooling capacity as opposed to our i5 which had over three times 120 mil on our radiator cooler. So the question and argument does still come, is that i7 actually better for gaming? Now whilst we couldn't exactly test it because we can't exactly get the same video cards, I would have to say not exactly, because the i7 is limited by not only smaller and less powerful cores, as well as all the other constraints we mentioned before, the i5 is also too taking advantage of roughly the same technologies that both of them are built on, not to mention not every game can actually support more than two or so processes. 
processors. If you actually start gaming and look at your CPU usage history, you'll find that most games take advantage of two, maybe even three processors at the time of recording. If you have an eight or even 16 threaded CPU, you're not gonna always be taking full advantage of that. Now, with that being said, there are a few exceptional games out there that do take advantage of that, but for the main part, it doesn't exactly take advantage. Lots of them do take more advantage of faster single cores rather than faster and more many cores. And I guess one more final nail in the coffin for the i7 notebook is that mobile chips are at the time of recording a lot weaker than their desktop counterparts. No matter what you're really comparing, the notebook side is always going to be less powerful than the desktop side because the desktops aren't limited to certain PCB layouts or certain power constraints or even thermals where you could have a huge motherboard with a huge power supply and big video cards and all those kind of things as opposed to a notebook that can't exactly have all those things and it does definitely come down to notebook versus desktop and I guess that is where it all boils down to and one of my final statements is pick the device that is right for you rather than the processor. If you need the high end horsepower of a desktop well then grab a desktop. If you need the portability then go ahead and grab a laptop. Though keep in mind they're not exactly comparable to each other. Whilst Intel does go ahead with their good better best i3, i5, i7, it doesn't exactly cross over in terms of notebook to actual desktop. So do do your research and find what will be best to you. Laptops do have the limitations of not many upgrade paths and well, not exactly the most powerful chips, but have the positive of movability and not having to be worried about tied to the wall if you need power. But on the desktop side, power is essentially what they have. You can plug in any peripheral you want, plug in any video card, any CPU, any motherboard, and the upgrade path is a lot more open as opposed to the notebook side, even though I don't know why I keep pointing to this side for the notebook side. So I guess it does come down to a pretty hard decision when it comes to picking one. But one thing that is not a hard decision is definitely Curious.com. If you like learning stuff, they've definitely got you covered. Whether you want to learn to make some cookies or go ahead and build yourself a new computer, they've got you covered. Sign up today for a one week free trial with no credit card required. And if you like this service, you can continue for a mere $7.19 a month. But for CPModder viewers, you can go ahead and save 20% when you use the link bit.do slash CPModder. So go ahead and use that link to go ahead and purchase and sign up, save 20%, we get a kickback and you guys get a saving. So on that note, guys, like or dislike the video accordingly, let me know what you think. Are you also too in this sort of position where it's hard to quantify whether the i7 is better than the i5 or are you a desktop or notebook person? Let me know down below. Give us a sub if you like what we're doing and I'll see you all next time for another video.